big interest in sleep and my passion is this idea of not just tracking sleep, but actually being able to improve sleep. Um, and what inspires me here is if you could maybe just improve sleep a small amount, it could have great ramifications for you know, everybody's time. And what started me on this track was I make sleep apps, and um, Dimitri, my business partner, contacted me on this recent scientific finding where basically you could enhance deep sleep with auditory stimulation that replicates the frequency of your brain waves when you're in deep sleep. So basically how this works is if you can detect when someone is in deep sleep, you play a sound that replicates that delta wave frequency and it actually primes and entrenches your brain to have deep sleep. The issue here is that this happens in very, um, you know, scientific environments with polysomnography and all this technology, my question is, can this be applied to an everyday app that people can use? And so I made this app. Um, basically what it does is it makes some assumptions in the fact that you're most likely to have deep sleep in the first stage of sleep, and then it plays this auditory stimulation that replicates that frequency of brain waves. And what I did is I tried to test if it actually improves memory, because deep sleep is associated with memory consolidation. Um, and so I made this simple app where you do a paired association memory task before you go to bed, and then you do it when you wake up and it measures your memory, and you either get no stimulation, 20 minutes of stimulation, or 40 minutes of stimulation, and I just randomized whether, whether or not I got this stimulation at night. Along with this is, the first off, you have to make sure that you're actually giving the stimulation in deep sleep, so I use various devices to measure my sleep, and I'll get more into um, my experience with these devices, I use the Hexoskin to get heart rate, Galaxy Gear, and also something called the ActoWatch. The sad thing was that the, oh, sorry, that the experiment didn't really work so well. So here um, you have my performance on the memory task, and basically what happened was there was no effect of the stimulation um, on whether or not I could remember things. Also, there was no effect on my sleep efficiency, you know, basically the amount of time spent in bed sleeping. Um, so this was kind of sad news, and also I did this task, it's called the psychomotor vigilance task, um, and that's a good measure of alertness, and basically there was, if anything, the 40 minutes of stimulation was worse for this. So this was kind of bad news and a little bit disheartening, but um, it didn't necessarily mean that the effect doesn't exist, and one of the reasons why I think I didn't get the effect was basically because people were aware of the stimulation. Um, even though I have a novel way of giving the stimulation based on um, if you start moving or not, 40% of the time people noticed it, suggesting that they weren't in deep sleep when it was administered. So basically, it didn't really work, but my hypothesis is that this is because I didn't give the stimulation at the right time. Um, so I started exploring different ways to try to get a non-invasive device that can um, provide the stimulation at the right time. And I was actually surprised um, at how much I liked wearing the ActoWatch compared to some of these other devices. So I have over 200 nights of data with the ActoWatch. Um, and the ActoWatch is good because it's validated against polysomnography for sleep-wake. And out of all the devices, it was really the only one that I wasn't uncomfortable wearing. Um, and it also has a really good battery life. So I'm just going to do a quick overview of um, a week of that data. Um, and here you'll see this is the, um, the little dots are basically validated sleep-wake, where um, wake is at the 1,000 and sleep is at the zero. And the raw acti activity is in green. And then you can really see, and then when I went to bed is the blue, and when I woke up is the, is the algorithm to detect um, is, is the orange. And you can really see when you have this continuous stream of data, which is really the ActoWatch was the only device that provided me this, really jumped out at you like when I was sleeping. Um, and I could evaluate my sleep efficiency pretty accurately with this. So um, actually, this was a an example of bad data. Um, one of the reasons why I didn't collapse things was um, uh, sometimes the algorithm didn't actually detect the right bedtime and wake time. But I kind of confirmed what I already knew about my sleep, um, which is I have pretty good sleep efficiency. 93% means I have healthy sleep. Um, I'm kind of a night owl because I don't really have a day job, and I wake up whenever I want. It's a nice luxury. Um, and so these are kind of things that I knew about my sleep. Um, 
but I really couldn't glean these from using things like um, the Galaxy Gear or the Hexo skin simply because it was too cumbersome to wear and I would forget to charge it. And um, the battery life, I guess, is an issue that I underestimated when I embarked on this study and how difficult it was to, to keep track of these devices. So here's another kind of typical night, night of sleep here. Um, and so we got 94% um, sleep efficiency. But so the big thing that I learned is that the continuous data collection for me seemed to be more valuable than some of these other devices that maybe had more sensors, like the Hexoskin. But then there's this conflict because the ActiWatch doesn't really produce um, the data that can detect deep sleep. Um, so if you kind of look at this graph here, this is produced from the Hexoskin. If you squint your eyes, you can kind of see the sleep stages here. Um, but the thing is, I mean, can this actually be used in a non-invasive way to detect deep sleep, basically? And there is scientific evidence. Uh, you know, Bedit is a, a device that I'm trying to look into now that can be used um, to detect maybe deep sleep. And this is something that I'm currently exploring. Um, and there's scientific literature that suggests that heart rate variability can be used to detect um, when deep sleep happens. Um, but really, the form factor of the hexoskin, um, I think, didn't really allow me to explore that very well. And you can see here, when you wear something like the hexoskin at night, you get these bad signals in the data. I mean, my heart rate is jumping around here from 50 to 100. Um, and so I think a system ought to have both continue a, a, a really good system for sleep, I think, that doesn't exist yet to, in order to solve this problem. It needs to have both continuous data and then also good reliable, reliable data for heart rate. And when that data is unreliable, perhaps it can back up to, to the continuous tracking data. And you could swap out the algorithms like that. Um, so basically, I, I, I started out embarking on answering the scientific question can, um, can my deep sleep be enhanced? And I kind of stumbled upon these roadblocks um, in terms of the difficulties in battery life and also just being able to measure things. Um, but now I'm currently trying to figure it out on the Apple Watch um, to see if I can enhance my deep sleep and just improve my sleep a small amount. And so if you're interested in, in this, you could, I have a, my danielgartenberg.com is my website. You can check out my research on this.